Okay, hi, welcome to the um, eighth vlog for my um, Churchill Fellowship, uh, where, which is about me going around Eastern Australasia, working with the Enhanced to Critical Care teams there, specifically looking at paramedical air to critical care. So I've already spent a bit of time now in Victoria, working with the, uh, the MICA teams, working in New Zealand with the Intensive Care Paramedics, and I've just spent the last four days really in Queens with Queensland Ambulance Service, working with the, uh, the HARU, the High Acuity Response Unit teams. Um, I'm pretty delighted today to have uh, Professor Rashford with me and I'm just going to ask him really a few questions about Haru and just really what it's about. So thank you very much for... Christian, for, absolutely no for problem. Spend, spend it's it's a pleasure time. having you. Yeah, yeah. Thank cool. you. Uh, so I was just wondering if you could just really introduce Haru and just explain what it is and what its uh, function is. Essentially. Sure. Uh, Haru is the uh, High Acuity Response Unit. So basically it's the third tier of our response matrix beyond our advanced care paramedics and then our critical care paramedics providing a, a specialised group uh, which will oversee the uh, really the tip, the, the, the uh, most difficult patients we have to treat in the high acuity sphere. Uh, so it's really to uh, ensure we have a small group of paramedics doing this work all the time uh, who can support our broader paramedic uh, response group. Okay, so it's a small cohort yes. of clinicians who've been trained up specifically to and a targeted, uh, very like high acuity patients, essentially. Absolutely. So, so we're, we're really looking at obviously con continue advanced airway management, so rapid in sequence induction, but not just the normal RSI profile, but very uh, difficult airways. We seek those those out. Uh, we also uh, blood products, so whether that be packed red cells, uh, fibrinogen concentrates, FFP. So we're very trying to look for the critical bleeding patient. Uh, a very aggressive use of uh, ultrasound uh, for diagnosis, particularly in, this, in, in the setting of trauma. Uh, but beyond that, so acute uh, medical emergencies and the like, and that obviously surgical thoracostomies, uh, thoracotomy, uh, and uh, a number of other things like amputation and, and the like. So they're, they're really doing a small number of better, but very high acuity jobs. Okay, excellent. So it's, um, it's quite a unique um, bunch of clinicians. So how about, how do they, what's the training and education process? So essentially for? it takes about taking a, a critical, an experienced critical care paramedic will take us about 16 to 18 weeks to uh, sign them off. Uh, onto Haru, yep. uh, and that will start with uh, both le didactic lectures, uh, immersions, lots of cadaver lab work, uh, f formal ultrasound courses, the same level that uh, a physician would do as their ab initio course, and then they get propped for their 50 scans and, and the like. So we're trying to set the standards as they would be in a hospital. Yep. Uh, it's not good enough to say it's more difficult pre-hospital. We actually want to uh, do things better than the hospital. We've driven a lot of change in our local hospital system. Uh, we started using a uh, very aggressive use of blood products nearly 10 years ago now, yeah. uh, well before most uh, systems that use them in urban environments did. Uh, ultrasound, we redesigned the RSI process. Uh, we got rid of sucks a long time before anyone else did uh, because we wanted to make it more simple, make it an easier procedure and, and, and achieve very high success rates. Yeah, brilliant. No, thank you. So what, what I did do, um, so I've spent a couple of um, shifts with your teams uh, and observe them in practice and, and talk to them about their, their thinking, their critical thinking. But I also attended one of your clinical governance days. So it seems to me they've got a slightly different clinical governance and audit process than the regular road, road paramedics. Yeah, they've got a much more rigorous audit process. So we've got pretty uh, rigorous processes for our normal paramedics, but this it's a three phase. It's uh, basically live. They have a live debrief for most of the high acuity cases. Then within uh, 24, 48 hours, we examine a, a database that they complete. And that database actually has the ultrasounds, uh, recordings, uh, OBS, all embedded in it. Uh, so we can listen back to what went on. We can actually see the ultrasound, make comment and, and do that. And then we have, uh, every two weeks, we have a more uh, a big day where we have everyone there, all the, uh, all the Haru paramedics. We invite other paramedics to come along, particularly those involved in cases. And we're very fortunate for our trauma directors uh, at our hospitals to come along and uh, some of the other medical staff. So we get basically a longitudinal audit of these cases and look at radiology from the hospitals to ensure that we can actually understand the journey of our patients and ultimately that will affect our care working back around to the next time we see someone and ultimately also change perhaps the trajectory inside the hospital system. So we're part of a seamless approach to these sick patients, uh, some roadside to the bedside, but the bedside is just before they get discharged from the hospital. Yeah. And I think uh, if we do that, uh, it will imp ultimately improve our performance. Thank you very much. That's, Pleasure. That's, that's brilliant. Thank Good you. Good on you. Cheers, Christian. Thanks.